Hello, and welcome to the Shoot, Reload, Repeat podcast. I am your host, Calvin, a.k.a. Practical as Buck. And today I have a special guest. Um, his name is Trevor Cotter, a.k.a. Bangin underscore Brass. He is an open shooter. Um, we recently connected on Instagram, and he just got done shooting Area 4. Limited. And so- oh, limited. <laughs> limited. Sorry. Not limited shooter. Oh, same thing. Limited, open. It's all the same <laughs> thing. It's all major power factor. Yeah, um, same shit. Shoots, shoots limited. So uh, why don't you go ahead? Thanks for being on, man. I appreciate it. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell everybody a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what you do, what, where, how you started shooting, things like that. Yeah, man. Uh, thanks for having me on, dude. I uh, appreciate it. Um, I am from Houston, Texas, originally. Um but I live in Midland, Texas now, out in the west side of Texas. Um, oh, I am a directional services salesman for Baker Hughes is my day job, but I moonlight as a shooter here and there. <laughs> um, I got into shooting, man, just, you know, uh, stopped playing sports, you know, after college and, uh, you know, always liked being athletic. And a buddy of mine was shooting IDPA and was like, man, you need to come out and and try this stuff because we always go to the range together and I went and tried it and it was fun and was like man this is pretty cool and then one of the guys at IDPA was like man if you like this you're gonna like USPSA much better (laughs) so I went and shot USPSA man fell in love with it and I've been doing it now for about a year and four months okay so did you play sports in college uh man short-lived uh played a little bit of football but what'd you, uh, what'd you play at uh u of h u of h yeah see me and you kind of have a similar background like i walked on um to university of incarnate word i was on the team for a couple of years and then i was kind of over it and decided to to stop and then in college i did bodybuilding and then when i got to college i needed something to do that was competitive because otherwise it's kind of drive my then girlfriend slash fiance crazy so <laughs> kind of got into the um the shooting sports so you started in idpa so did you how many idpa matches did you shoot i uh, shot two yeah i shot two idpa shot two. i still i still shoot idpa every now and again uh, i'll shoot carry optics in it but mainly uspsa that's cool and you shoot you said you shoot limited i do so, so did you start with start out in limited or did you start out in a different division my first uspsa match i shot production for about two stages <laughs> and uh yeah the i was shooting with the rm and he was like hey uh you know you're not doing so well on these reloads why don't you just go ahead and fill those mags up bud <laughs> yeah and switched over to limited so i uh, haven't stopped since and i've played with open you know funny you mentioned open them you know i played with open here recently and um uh, and uh i think next year i'm gonna i'm gonna give that a go it's 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 really fun man i think everybody's open curious like I think what deters a lot of people is the price tag. Yeah, it is. It is expensive, man. Especially it, when you start playing with thirty-eight. Yeah, um, that's cool. Yeah, my dad he started off in production, and I think he shot two matches in production. And he said to heck with having to count and reload. And he's he just shoots limited minor now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I I I started in limited too, and now I'm shooting carry optics because limited minor is not that competitive. So decided to do that that's cool so you live out in midland so do y'all have a lot of clubs out there because my dad he lives in lubbock and they only have one club and i think some guys from midland go up there to shoot have you ever been to lubbock to shoot because i know it's not that far yeah i shoot every every month at lubbock yeah so you, so you go up to west texas yeah yeah so we've got our midland club we've got san angelo um, abilene lubbock hobbs carlsbad all within about a two and a half hour drive and they put on some pretty good matches so how are the matches in new mexico because uh, the, i'm trying fast, to get man they are because i'm trying to get my dad this you know they only have that one match a month and i was trying to get him to try to go to at least two a month so maybe i'll have him that's cool i bet that's pretty i wonder if we've ever been in the same we've probably been the same matches then just didn't know it Probably, man. You need to have them come down and shoot our middle of match. I think, honestly, out there in that area, I think once you get past past the San Antonio area, man, Midland puts on probably the best match. Our match director, Billy Dotson, is a mad scientist when it comes to stages. He's he's insane, dude. You'll you'll shoot national quality stages 
for five stages in a in a in a club match. It's it's pretty rad. When do y'all have matches? First Sunday of every month is the Midland match. First Sunday. Let me write that down because maybe next time I go down there, I'll try to go and see. Maybe me and him can go because he'll he's coming down here in October to shoot a hose fest match with me. So um, yeah, that, that's cool. I, I'm I like that y'all have good matches up there because. If you guys, you listeners, don't know where Midland, oh, Midland, well, let's call it Midland, Odessa, because it's like pretty much the same. It's pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Um, if you watch the movie Friday Night Lights, it'll kind of give you an idea. <laughs> yeah. So dude, it's, there's, there's it's probably, a little town in the middle of the desert. It's pretty much nothing else to do out there. So shooting is probably a good hobby to have. We used to go to the Midland all the time for sports in high school, and I did not like it at all. But um, I'll definitely have to get my dad to one of those matches. Maybe we'll. Maybe we can shoot together one time if we don't yeah, shoot a major. Sure. So let's talk about – why don't you talk a little bit about your – the gear that you use. So you shoot limited. So why don't you kind of talk about the gun you use, some of the gear, your gun, your your mag your, your mag pouches, your mag, your mag belt, everything, your whole setup. Yeah, man. Uh, my my la- main limited gun is a Bad Dog Customs. He's a uh, gun builder out of Coleman, Texas, man. He's well-known out in West Texas. Um uh, you know, he hasn't really hit it big yet, but he built some sick guns, dude. And, um, you know, the open gun I'm playing with is an Atlas Chaos because those things are just, they're absolutely insane. <laughs> um, but as far as um, belt and everything goes, man, I, I, li- I really like the Gugaribus belt and the Gugaribus mag pouches. The belt's real stiff, so it doesn't flex on you. And the mag pouches, you know, they have a fully exposed front, so I can get my, I can get a full, you know, posture up on the mag. But I ran their holster for a little bit, but I, I've been, I've been running with the ghost holster, the ghost the one holster, man. And mm-hmm. I think that's, that's the way I'm going to stick with. I've been running for about six months now. I actually won it at nationals and was like, hey, I'll give this a shot. And then I was like, wow, this is far superior. So and that, I've been the- rocking with that one. Aren't they? Where are they located? Aren't they loaded like located like in Brazil? Like they're not they're not an American company, are they? Gugas or Ghost? Uh, the other one. Gugaribus. Gugaribus is a uh, Brazilian company. That's what. I, actually. That's what I. Yeah, because like I follow them on Instagram, and I'm I'm always like trying to figure <laughs> out like what the heck their their stories are saying. That's Dude, cool. I I got a funny little little quick one here. Uh, first time. First time I ever had any issues with their stuff, you know, I, I break mag pouches a lot. I reload, um, you know, when I hit my reloads, I hit, a little, I hit them aggressive, and I've broken three of their mag pouches. That's not a testament to their craftsmanship. You know, I've broken six of the double alphas, so that's not saying much. Um, right. But I called them, and I was like, hey, I broke one of your mag pouches, and the lady spoke zero English. So when she realized I was an American, she put me on the phone with this guy who sounded like he was out of an old Western film. He was like, you know, Giga Ravers, how can I help you? <laughs> and I was like, I guess they send all the Americans to you, huh? But yeah, that yeah, was funny. But they replaced it every time. So, oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, I've I've seen their stuff. Like, and I think like JJ uses their belt and yeah, stuff like he, that. He's who turned me on to them. Um, when I was looking at getting it limited, um, he's good friends with a buddy of mine, Marco. So I, I get to talk to that guy my fair share, and he's the one who turned me on to the Guga's uh, belt and mag pouches. That's cool. So you so you use that so you use the the mag pouches the belt what gun and you said what what so that gun is custom made so what kind of parts and stuff do you have in it? So it has a CK uh, grip and frame, um, and I run their magwell as well because I don't really have a choice because Chile is proprietary and yeah. I run an Infinity barrel an Infinity sight tracker barrel and he actually uh, pinned and welded a sight tracker a sight block on the front of it kind of like a kind of like an atlas nemesis that's cool yeah it's pretty neat man it's flat as hell and i'm running all infinity ignition parts that's awesome yeah i would love to get into the 2011 game i just are they are they more maintenance intensive you know well i shoot a glock so all all i do is i change out my i just change out my striker spring after like i don't even know how many thousand rounds because getting light strikes so i think I don't know. I, I think that's like the biggest thing is I don't. I guess I've never really played with the 2011 platform, so maybe one day I'll get into it. So maintenance wise, man, it's like um, you know, it's like anything. Once you start getting into the the realm of you know trying to push that extra percent, you know, you see it with anything. You know, cars. You know, you can 
you can go on a track and, and you can kick some ass with a Ford Mustang, you know, but once you start running a, you know, an F1 car, you know, they, they, they have to stay on top of the maintenance with those things. So the faster you go, the more shit breaks, but 2011s are a little bit of maintenance, but as long as you keep on top of it, you never really notice it. Um, okay. Mags is, Mags is the biggest problem. I, yeah. I hate the design of a 2011 Mag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see. I always, I always hear bad things, and I know the mags are freaking expensive too. I've 100, seen hundred and forty dollars a pop, man. Yeah, I could buy like <laughs> I don't even know how many Glock mags <laughs> I could buy for that. I think I could buy every every one on my squad a Glock mag for that. All that's of them, crazy. dude. You can buy all the Glock mags for that. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, that's cool, man. So we so in the timeline, I'm not sure when, when I'll post this episode, but we just finished Area Four. So why don't you kind of talk about your experience with Area Four? Um, especially since, you know, the great rain and flood and tornado happened and they had to move it. So why don't you kind of talk about that experience? Yeah, man, uh, area four, you know, I was looking forward to it the first go around when it was supposed to happen. And then, uh, I'm actually sitting at dinner with my wife the night before I'm supposed to leave out here to Houston. And, you know, I get a text from OG, the range master. And he says, Hey man, we're canceling the match. We just got hit by a tornado. And I'm like, well, <laughs> So, uh, coming out this time, I was, I was ready, man. I, I wanted, you know, I wanted a win or bust. So, um, you know, the, the great Blake Miguez was here. He's, you know, he's, he's a monster. And I knew if I was going to compete with him, I had to push it. And, you know, I did push it. I did really well. I had nine just lights out stages, um, talking about 2011 mags, man, three, three stages out of the match. I had some mag issues that cost me probably total about 15 seconds worth of jacking with the mags. Yeah, it was rough. It's a and, long time. Yeah, it's a long time. And then Blake got DQ'd uh, three stages before the finish, and I said, man, this if I'm going to win an area championship, now's the time, you know, because Blake left the door wide open. And uh, second to last stage, more mag issues. <laughs> So I ended up finishing sixth and, uh, you know, I went back, they had the practice score competitor at the what ifs and, you know, without, if I would have taken any one of those stages and removed the mag issues, I would have won oh. any one of them, any one of the three, I would have won the match. So, so close yet so far away, but I'm going to get it, dude. I'm coming for it. Cause you know, I don't accept second place. Yeah. That practice score competitor app, man, it's a blessing and a curse. It I mean, is, dude. I got home last night from my local match, and I was playing with it, and I was like, dang, if I didn't have – I was just going through changing my some of my scores. I'm like, oh, my God, I could have been so much better. Yeah, it but, could have been somebody, man. That's how I look at it. I could have been somebody. Do you ever use that app during the match, like where people are at or like to – or no? Do you like stay away from that in the practice score app? Man, I try to when I'm when I'm shooting, I focus up. You know, I don't I don't really worry about what everyone else is doing unless they're shooting with me. Um, you know, I'll hear some stuff like some stages at Area Four. You know, I connected and was able to pull off a stage win. And right when I did it, you know, the RS were like, "Man, you know, Blake did it in this." And you know, that, I was like, "Man, that's great and all, but I don't need that in my head because you know you got to go. You, you got to take it stage by stage. If you get caught up in what everyone else is doing, you're not shooting your game. And if you're not shooting your game," You know, you can pretty much just guarantee you're going to be the first loser. That's true. And, and I think that's what's cool about um, practical shooting. And I talked about this with Mike Stoker was, you know, it's really it's an individual thing. Like I, you're shooting against other people, but it's your performance. Like if you don't show up and shoot the stage the way you know you can, then I think that's why I think that's why I like it so much is because like even if you like like I mean, you see guys like Max Michelle and jj and you know um ben who just shoot they they're, they're winners they, they've won national championships world championships but they're still hungry because they can always find something that they can do better and even like for you on this large of a scale at area four you know like what, what was your overall placement you said third right overall uh, no, six, six. six six overall and then so i mean even like most people i would think would be happy with that but us as being competitors, it's like, nah, I could, if I would have done this, 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 this better, I could have been here. And I think that's what's great about the sport is it's, it's always like, you're always going to have that. So absolutely, man. Stoker said it best when he was on, dude, if you're okay with second place, you're okay with mediocrity. And, you know, you look at all the best athletes in the world, 
you know, unless they're winning, they're not happy. And I, I carry that same mentality. You know, I played team sports my whole life, but even then, you know, I, I, I won't accept second place. I won't do it. And my wife t- is the biggest, like, D- you did good. And I'm like, not good enough. <laughs> yeah. She's yeah, like, that's you're a- relentless. I said, I know that's, that's why I want to, that's why I want to be the best in the world one day, you know? That's awesome. So um, you said you only really been shooting USPSA for a year. So how, like, what is kind of like your journey through that kind of been like? Because, you know, we're talking about, you know, you're shooting an area match, which is a huge match. So what, what, how did you kind of like, like, what has your progression been? Like, did you just jump into like these big matches or did you wait a little while? So, man, I, I kind of jumped in pretty quick. I'm the type of guy, if I'm going to do something, I'm going head first all in. And once I decided I liked USPSA, I was like, this is the go. So, you know, like I said, we put on some good matches out there and we've got some really good shooters in Midland. And a lot of them were like, man, you have a knack for this and you're picking it up fast. So um, I went to my first major match, I think two months into shooting and I did well. Um, You know, I did pretty well. I think I came in fourth in my class, which was uh, limited B at the time. And, you know, for only shooting for a short time, it worked out well. And then, uh, you know, I, I practice a lot. I think right now I'm putting down about 7,000 rounds a month. And, you know, wow. I, I've got a pretty relentless training program. So I usually am on the range at least four days a week and I dry fire five days a week. So I, I give the, the you know Thursday and Fridays for my wife when she's off work. I don't really I don't really pick up a gun. But other than that, you know, I, I'm on it. So I jumped in pretty head first and I've done – Every every big match I can. I think last year I shot uh, eleven majors, and this year I'm on pace to shoot nineteen. So wow, man! So what all have you shot so far this year? Uh, this year I shot uh, Magnus Cup. I did Henry Cup. Uh, let me look real quick. I've got it all pulled up. Oh, Magnus! I heard Magnus was that was a that's JJ's match right out there in set in Utah. Is that where it's at? Yeah, I was in St. George, Utah, man. And you talk about a rough match. That was that was the hardest match I think I've ever shot yeah. technical, you know, Watch like, it. on the technical aspect of yeah, it. Yeah, seeing stuff on Instagram, man, I was like, oh, my God. Some of that stuff is ridiculous, man. It was insane, dude. Some of the stuff that we were doing, I, I couldn't even – I've never shot prone. I guess I, I, well, you that, know, I did, I did that, trial by fire, and they had two prone stages, and, and it was something else. That's tough. I've never seen like I've never shot prone either. Like I can't <laughs> I can't imagine. Um, did you? I, I you also shot the great um, what was it? Uh, what's the, double tap with all the nice with the nice rain and the nice mud too. Yeah, man. Double tap was uh, double tap was great this year. I shot it last. That was actually my first major I ever shot was uh, double tap last year in uh, in June, and uh, I went back this year and holy crap, man, we. We didn't end up shooting until about 1130. Um, well, I shot at the beginning of the morning. I shot uh, – it started raining on us right when we were about to start shooting, and I was the second guy up on the stage on my first stage, and Charlie Perez was right behind me, and you know, we kind of looked at each other, and he goes, I'm not shooting in this. And I was like, well, I'm, you know, I'm up, so what should I do? He said, man, it's up to you. So I went up, and I shot, and it was – it was pouring rain, you know, I could barely see my fiber and, you know, I ended up taking a, a few mics on that stage and it was just, it was rough. But, you know, once the rain cleared up, you know, all we're doing is shooting in mud, but it, it was, it was, it was a tough match just because of the weather, you know, Porter yeah. puts on hoser fest and there's not a whole lot of, you know, hard cover, no shoots. So it's pretty wide open. So it made it a little bit easier the way it was set up, but it still sucked because of the weather. Yeah. I, I think I'm going to shoot, that match next next year because me and my dad have both talked about shooting double tap because that um up there at west texas they usually have like i guess after double tap they always have a couple stages from double tap i think it was two years ago or a year and a half like last year they had a stage from double tap and they had it at their match and it freaking destroyed me so yeah I've always porter, went, porter I've always leaves to shoot up them. those matches um for about a month afterward he leaves all the stages up and he breaks it down and you'll shoot six stages during his local match of the of the double tap, and then six stages the next match of the double. So you'll shoot the double tap event, you know, twice if you twice. if you're shooting those local matches. That's cool. That's great. Yeah, I haven't I haven't shot a level two yet. I think my first one I'll probably shoot will probably be in November. I'll probably I think I'm going to shoot Area Fifty Nine Championship. 
Yeah, that'll so, be a good one, man. You need to get on my squad. I'm shooting Area 59, bro. Let's do this. When are you shooting? Uh, I am shooting. Let me see here. I don't even think I'm squatted yet, to be honest with you. Because I have to. I think I'm going to just shoot all day Saturday because I have to work Friday. So I might just. And I don't know. I have to check things for schedule, schedule wise. So I'm going to try to sign up for that one. Yeah, I'm definitely shooting Area 59. I, I shot it last year. It was a good one. So we could talk well, about I mean, that off air. Yeah, 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 we'll do that. So, like, um, what are what? So you said you, you shot a few. So do you have any more big area matches or um, level two matches coming up in the future? Yeah, I mean, I'm shooting Area Three in two weeks. Um, I'm excited for that one. That's going to be my redemption for for losing this area match. I hope you know. And I that's gonna go. that's gonna be in what Nebraska? Yeah, that's in Nebraska. Nebraska, that's cool. That'd be a different. It'd be a change of scenery. It might not be so freaking hot. Man, <laughs> yeah, I, man. I can't. Sure. Ima- I can't imagine because my me. You know, the last episode that we just recorded, we talked about, or the episode that's going to post this week. Hint, hint. Um, is going to be about <laughs> like uh, hot weather matches, and so you know, in Midland and West Texas, it's not real humid, and down here in San Antonio area, man, it's humid. So I can't imagine what it was like in Houston. This these last couple of days because in Houston, it's just God awful. It's terrible humidity. I, I one the two things I can't stand about Houston is traffic and the humidity. So are you shooting nationals this year? I am. Yeah. I'm shooting nationals this year for sure. I shot it last year and, and ended up shooting a, a couple stages with, uh, you know, with no fiber on my gun. So it was a little rough. Um, that is rough. Yeah, I took a I took a hard L last year at nationals, being my first nationals, and you know JJ was shooting with us, and it was intimidating. So well, this year I'm, I'm going to go to nationals and shoot my game. So that's cool. That's, I, I, that, so what is that? I guess maybe kind of talk about that. Like when you shot at your nationals, like that, you know, being a first time shooter and shooting with you know world class shooters, what was that experience like? Man, it was surreal, you know. You know, I've I watched those guys even before I was in, you know, into practical shooting. You know, I watched JJ and Blake Piaz on Top Shot season one, and you know, I, I've you know, I've always been a fan of those guys. And to get to shoot with those guys is very humbling, um, especially if you consider yourself a pretty good shooter and you watch <laughs> them do some of yeah, you know, and you watch them do some of the things they do, and you're like, you know, it's almost, it's almost it's hard to believe, you know, JJ shot a, a local match with us um, a couple weeks ago. And when he was done with the match, he was like, man, I shot like, you know, I, it was horrible. You know, I missed a whole target, you know, and I don't do that. And then you cut to the scores and he crushed everybody by like 12%. And you're like, okay, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> so you shoot a, you know, your first nationals, I was, you know, bright eyed, bushy tailed, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to show up and be somebody. And then, you realize just how big it is and how many shooters and who's there and who you're shooting against. And, you know, you watch him shoot a stage and you're like, Oh, I can do that. And then you try it and you, you can't do it. So. Yeah. That's, that's, I think that's, I think that's a good experience um, with level two matches. Like I said, I've never shot one before, but I want to shoot one. I just want to see where, like kind of where I stack up. Um, I kind of want to have that pressure of a level two, um, you know, because you, know, you can shoot local matches and, we have a we have a club here in San Antonio that puts on pretty good um, local matches. They're uh, it's called they are the River City Shooters Club. Um, they put on like very good matches. A lot of people come from like all around San Antonio or Austin area to come shoot them. Um, but I still want to have that experience. So I have to. Well, we can talk about Area Fifty Nine afterwards. I think that'll probably be the first one. Oh yeah, that River City Shooter Club. My buddy Grady Steering has been trying to get me to come down there for a while. I think I'm going to make the trip for one of y'all's local matches here pretty quick. Yeah, when you do, let me know, man. We'll go. They're about to. They're about to. I think they're about to switch to twice a month USPSA because they were just doing one on fourth Sunday, and then the second Sunday was their still challenge. But I don't think they're getting a lot of um, people coming out for still challenge. So they had talked about they had a classifier match last weekend or two weekends ago, and they talked about having twice a month. So if you come down, man, let me know. And it's, it's a good match, dude. They put on really good matches. They, um, they have pretty much have like, the, like their where they shoot their matches, that part of the range belongs to them. So they go out and they set the stages up the night before and they like, you know, test them and stuff like that. So that way they don't, they're not just showing up Saturday morning and throwing the stages together. Like it's, they're very well thought out and they're, they're, they're very high caliber stages. So they're fun. They're good. Yeah, how for far, sure. 
Um, so let's talk a little bit about, so you said, so I, I know you have some sponsors. So why don't you kind of talk kind of like Mike did, but like some, who some of your sponsors are and like, what did you do to try to get those sponsors? Like, what was your process? Cause I know a lot of people have the questions about that. Um, I know like before I joined the Rudy team, that was kind of like something that I always wondered, like, like, you know, how do these, how do guys like a regular guy like me, how do I end up getting a sponsor? So like, why don't you kind of talk about that? Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, you know, when I got into when I got into practical shooting, I I was already a range junkie. I went to uh, we have a range out in Midland, Odessa called Ally Outdoors. It's it's actually the largest indoor gun range in Texas. It's like a candy shop, man. You get in serious trouble there with your significant other if if you have <laughs> one or with your with your bank account. And um, you know, when I started taking it pretty serious and I started making some headway, the owner James Grip. You know, we, we kind of sat down and he was like, Hey, our, our Dallas branch, which is ally outfitters. You see all those North Texas lead farmer shooters, uh, you know, Calvin Truong, um, Ryan Wilkes, all those guys, they shoot for his Dallas branch. And he said, man, let's do this thing. You know, if you want to, you know, if you want to shoot for, if you want to shoot for us, go for it. And I was like, huh. you know, I didn't have any business at the time, you know, probably picking up any sponsors. Cause I was, you know, I, I wasn't that good at the time, but, uh, he did me right. And, and I tried to represent as, as good as possible, but, you know, um, other sponsors I picked up besides that, you know, like Hunter Golds, I've actually picked them up at the Henry cup, uh, this year in Houston. Um, I got done shooting and, and I was talking to Brian and, and he said, Hey man, let's, you know, let's do this thing. You seem like a good guy. And it seems to be the theme with, with picking up sponsors, unless you're, unless you're JJ or Max, you know, those guys are expected to, to just be the best in the world. But a lot of these sponsors, they're just looking for somebody who can represent their brand at a match. And right. if you can, if you can be a personable guy, you know, it's all about, it's all about marketing and, you know, Mar uh, you know, Stoker hit it on the head, you know, he's, that guy's a marketing genius. And, you know, I actually take a lot of my tips from him, but you know, as long as you're giving them an ROI and, and they're, you know, they're not just dumping money into you for no reason. Typically it's not too hard to, you know, it's not too hard to pick them up. Um, you know, PC bullets out of Ohio, you know, they're, they're, they're big time up there. And all I did was hit them up one day on email. Cause I was using the bullets and said, Hey, you know, I like your stuff, you know, how can I help you help me? And, you know, next thing you know, they're helping me out. I'm helping them out. And, you know, it just, it's a, it's a snowball effect. Once you learn how to, once you learn how to get that marketing standpoint down, you know, you can, you can pick up sponsors pretty fast. Yeah. That, that seems to be the, the reoccurring theme is that if you're just a generally a good dude and you don't shoot PCC, people will probably <laughs> give you the sponsor. You. I don't think yeah, I've ever right. seen a PCC guy with a Jersey on that. He didn't make himself. Dude. The only guy I know is my buddy Grady he shoots for F1 and, uh, oh, these F1 guys are always up here. Oh, he, they, they live out here. Right. Don't they? I've seen, I've seen that some of the F1 guys at the matches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, th those guys seem to be the only PCC guys who are, who are I mean, them and like Max Lee Grandis, but I mean, you, you're talking Max Lee Grandis is probably arguably the greatest rifle shooter that that's that's on the planet right now when it comes to a PCC. So uh, rightfully so he gets sponsors. But yeah, uh, I don't I don't really know. That's a good point. I don't know a lot of PCC guys who are who are rocking some some jerseys that they didn't just, you know, print out themselves or send some CAD designs to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. That's just, that's, yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think we should go down the PCZ hole. <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah, it generally is, man. If you're a good guy and you know how to, you know how to carry yourself and how to market, you know, yourself and the company, you know, you can, you can, and, and ask, you know, I mean, every, most of the sponsors I have, I approached them and, you know, a lot of people don't like to talk about that. You know, they, they like to think that they like to put on this facade like they were approached, but you know, nine times out of ten, if you if you're not asking, you're not you're not getting it. So, you know, be open about it if you want something. You know, I'm a big proponent of just go grab it. So, yeah, you know, I mean, if you if you just go ask for it, you know, what's sports are going to say no? And that's that's how you know with the re team, I felt like I needed like some extra mode. I I I for me, I feel like I needed to have that sense of like belonging. So. I was like looking for, you know, something I could people I could shoot with or like like a team belong to. So I just contacted a, my good buddy Tyler Northcutt. He's our essential team captain. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a good dude. I know him very well. Yeah, he's a great dude. What's crazy is he's from Lubbock too. So he's from that area. 
And I just met because I had talked to him a little bit on Instagram and I'm like, hey, man, like, what do I need to do to join the team? And it was real simple. And I think it's I mean, it's good because, you know, for like with the Rudy team, we have a network of people that you know, we can shoot with and train with. You have people, I imagine, that are there to support you. And and I, for me, it, it kind of gives me like, you know, other than that winning attitude, when I'm at a match, it kind of makes me want to perform a little bit better because I got these people, these outside people that aren't just me that are supporting me. That, you know, I have my, I literally have like their names on my shirt. And so I want to like do the best I can for them, I guess. Yeah, like, like you want to, like you want to represent them. So, yeah, you got that support system working for you. So I think that's a big part of it too, is like it kind of gives you that extra motivation. Like, man, I don't really want to drive fire today. But then you remember, man, I, I sucked at that last match. So maybe I need to represent my sponsors a little bit better. Um, so let's talk a little bit about some of your goals for this year. So I know we're about halfway through this season. Um, so why don't you kind of talk about your goals and yeah. kind of what, like what you've accomplished and what, what, what are you still looking to accomplish for this year? Yeah, man. So I was on a, I was on a pretty good hot streak this year um, at the beginning of the year up until Oklahoma sectional. Um, you know, I hadn't lost, uh, I hadn't lost in my class. Uh, I was pretty well sweeping my class, uh, you know, pretty, pretty regularly. And, um, you know, I was doing well in the overall, but, you know, uh, Oklahoma section, you know, the heat got to me and uh, that was actually the first match I lost my class uh, this year. So, uh, I didn't do very well in the overall on that one, but my goals for this year, man, coming out of area four, um, you know, I, I just want to keep, I just want to keep, uh, keep pushing forward. So area three is coming up. You know, I want to, I want to have a good showing at area three. I got area three, area two, um, New Mexico sectional, uh, Ulfo classic area 59 nationals and then New Mexico sectional. So my goal is to not drop out of the top five in the overall and win my class every time. And if I can do that, you know, I, I think I'll be happy and nationals, you know, I want to crack that top 10 slot. I want to, I want to That'd be great. Yeah, I want to make everybody kind of sweat in that in that top ten at Nats, and then I'll be I'll be pretty happy with the year. Awesome. Did um, do you have any aspirations of? I know it's kind of too late now because they just had Ipsic World Nash like Ipsic Nationals. Would that be like a goal for you in the future, or to be to shoot on the national team for the world shoot? Yeah, man. Uh, all my buddies back in Midland, they give me they give me a lot of hell because you know I told them uh, this year um, I told them hey. Um, world shoot 2023, you know, I'm going to be wearing that red, white, and blue Jersey. And they said, dude, you're out of your mind. You know, you're going to have to go through the likes of, you know, JJ Rakov and Nils Johnson, Blake McGuez, all those guys, Shane, Shannon Smith, Shane Cooley. And I said, dude, mark my words, you know, 2023, I'm coming for it. And you know, it's, it's a lofty, lofty goal. If I do it, it'll be insane to even comprehend. But if not, you know, it is what it is, but I'm going to go for it. And you know, I knew 2020 was, there's, there's just no way in hell. Um, it would have been a miraculous thing for me to even get close to making the world shoot team this year. But yeah, that definitely is an aspiration. You know, I, I want to, I want to be the best in the world at this one day. And, you know, in order to do that, you got to set those type of goals. So yeah, that'd be, I think that'd be so cool to, you know, represent your, like, you're not like you're representing your country. You're not representing sponsors or stuff like that. You're like representing your country. To shoot, I think that's pretty cool. It's kind of like the Olympics. Yeah, man, that's the dream of any athlete, you know, is to represent the country they come from, you know. The Olympics, you know, you got, you know, the the World Cup in soccer. You know, it's, that's, that's that's the dream of any athlete is to is to represent their country on the world stage. So, But it's a lot cooler because it's shooting. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, it is. <laughs> no kneeling around there, you know. Yeah, that's right. Um, so I think, is there anything else you want to talk about before we jump out of here? uh yeah man uh just uh you know plug my instagram you know uh banging underscore brass you know anybody listening give me a follow you know i post post a lot of match stuff and uh you know a lot of training stuff and uh, the occasional goofy shit on my story and then uh you know shout out to the to my sponsors uh ally outdoors hunter hd golds pc bullets uh bad dog customs big country tactical black rifle coffee and uh other than that man that's 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 about it i do want to say like you are my first interviewee that i've had more instagram followers in so that makes me happy i feel like i'm going <laughs> i feel like i'm getting somewhere because when i yeah. interviewed mike <laughs> i looked at his i was like holy crap there ain't, he is way more than i do 
And yeah, then, I mean, De- I'm and then Devin. So new to this. Yeah. So well, maybe actually... we can change followers. Y'all go follow him. Y'all go follow. Uh, go follow my buddy here, man. And y'all, and then maybe some of your followers will follow me, and we can, you know, swap. Or maybe we can pay for some people. Maybe we can just buy some followers from India or something like that. Yeah, man. Yeah. The only. I, I, I've never been a social media guy, and my sponsors, uh, you know, mainly Ally Outdoors, when I started shooting, was like, hey, man, you're going to have to get an Instagram. And uh, so so the Instagram is pretty new. So, uh, you know, that's, I'm, I'm learning. That's funny because I start like I I'm I, I guess I don't know because I'm a millennial. I kind of like social media is my thing. So I kind of use that to my advantage. I like I like the social medias, especially the memes. Yeah, man. Yeah, I definitely. Now that I have it, man, I, you know, I, I got to get my daily dose of meme fun at the uh, at the end of the day. So. And what's crazy is it's funny how like, like I'll, I'll follow people on Instagram, and then I'll see them at a match, or like I'll see them at a match, and then I'll follow them on Instagram. And like like with Tyler, I didn't realize like I had been at four or five matches with him, and I had never like talked to him. So the whole shooting community is like it's. Like when you're on the Insta- like Instagrams, it seems very like far like spread out, but really it's like very tight knit, like very, like very very close together. So, all right, it man. Is. So if there's nothing else. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up. So make sure you guys go on Facebook, search in the search bar, shoot, reload, repeat podcast. Like our Facebook page. Everything I post on my Instagram, post directly to the Facebook page. I finally figured out how to link them. Thank God, because it was I was having a post on both. It took forever. Um, I you can also follow me on Instagram uh, at practical as buck. I post some really fire memes usually on Thursdays that I make myself because I love memes and you gotta let the PCC guys know where they stand with us. Um, make sure you like the page. Make sure if you listen to this, make sure you subscribe. If you're on Apple Podcasts, make sure you subscribe. Leave us a five star rating. Leave us a review. One day I'll hopefully have some reviews to read. Um, and I'll add that into the show, but there's nothing else. Anything else you want to add before we jump up out of here? No, man. Thanks for having me on, dude. I, yeah. you know, I listened to the podcast before I was, uh, was on it. So it's, it's a good podcast. So I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying being on it. I appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Hopefully we'll get to shoot together soon one day. I'm pretty sure we've crossed paths before. We just didn't, it was before I was, you know, famous when I got a <laughs> podcast. It was back in my humble days. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> oh, so. Um, hopefully we'll get to shoot guys. So thank you guys for listening. Um, make sure y'all subscribe and shoot fast and don't suck.